All right, we are live on YouTube. I am going to just give some people uh, a few uh, a few minutes to get here. Mike, what's up? What's going on? We're gonna cast some Alumalite clear slow tonight. We'll do some show and tell from last week. And uh, we'll do some show and tell and uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of show and tell. We'll do some, some uh, breaking news type things. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good time. So we'll give people a couple minutes to, to get here. We'll see how we'll see. Okay. So how was how was Tuesday so far? First of all, can you guys hear me? Is my mic coming in okay? Hopefully you guys can hear me. If you guys can comment just to let me know that you can hear me, that would be awesome. I would appreciate that. This is going to be a fun one tonight. My... Uh, air conditioner is running in the background. That's probably what you're hearing. Um, it was a nice, cool 93 today in Ohio. So that was, uh, it was pretty much an indoor day. Just wait another minute or two to, for people to uh, show up. I know five o'clock Eastern Standard Time is is a little bizarre. You know, people on the East Coast are just getting off work. If they're you know if they're back to their uh, office job, they might not get home till later. Uh, and then people you know Central Time Zone, Western Time Zone, whatever. Um, um, I, I know that kind of gets them, um, kind of makes it difficult, but I, I've, I've been considering, um, changing the time, but I, I, this has been okay so far. Angie, Jim, Robert, what's up? We're just waiting for a couple more, uh, you know, see if a couple more people show up. Um, this will be a fun one tonight. Uh. I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again. We'll do some show and tell. I'll show you guys what we got last week and then, uh, or, you know, the, the results from last week. And then um, we'll do a little uh, breaking news segment. We got some big, big changes coming. It's going to be a good time, though. Super exciting. So I haven't actually decided what we're going to cast tonight. And we're on the live stream. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to, you know, see, you know, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see just Alumalite clear slow? Do you want to see sweet gum pods? Do you want to see pine cones? Do you want to see handle, uh, handle or call blanks? Do you want to see pen blanks? What do you, ring blanks? What do you guys want to see? Um, South Louisiana. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen. Um, I'm going to flip the screen here. Um, just a second. Just give me one second. Hang on, guys. 
guys. I'm getting there. Todd, what's going on? It's good to see you. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, left comments. Uh, handle blanks. Okay, let's do Illumilite and handle blanks. Illumilite clear slow. Um, like I said, I was going to, um, JSG, what's up? I'm going to flip the camera around. If that doesn't seem to, uh, produce a good, um, whoops. If that doesn't seem to produce good enough light, then we'll just... We'll see how this goes. All right, so actually, there's actually quite a bit here. So these are the results of last week's. Um, uh, last week's projects. Here's the three pen blanks. This one is my absolute favorite. It looks the best in my opinion it's got some nice green swirls in it here's another one now the camera's going to play tricks on me but these are darker pen blanks um they seem shiny because i did put some lacquer on them just to give an idea of what they would look like finished uh, this one is really, really dark. It's mostly blue. Uh, there's some green in there. Um, and then here are the bottle stoppers from last week. Um, I'm going to see if I can move this up here and get a better shot. So we have, we have two here. You can kind of see the walnut shell. Um, they're in there. So there's two of those, and then we have two more. Again, you can see the walnut shells there and there. These came out really cool. Um, these seven pieces, four bottle stoppers and three pen blanks, they are available. Um, they aren't listed, but if you want to claim them, you can always send me a message through social media. Um, Instagram is probably the easiest. Uh, all of my Social media links are in the uh, description of this YouTube video, um, as well as some Amazon affiliate links, which also help me. Um, and then um, a few other things. So if you want to check out anything else of what I'm doing, um, you know, pretty much links to anything you would need are in the description here um also in the description uh todd moderates um moderates the chat he helps out with a lot of behind the scenes stuff so uh his channel tlf works uh, his channel and his website are also in the description as well so make sure you go subscribe to him as well okay so here are my here's my handle mold uh two handles. It's a P-Town Subby mold silicone. Um, P-Town Subby silicone molds. It's one and three quarters. That's not going to show up on camera. Uh, it's one and three quarters by one and three quarters by six. So it's going to take a lot of resin. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them um, some, I'm going to make them sweet gum pod uh, blanks. So hopefully... I have enough sweet gum pot. And before we do that, I'm going to be smart. And I'm going to move this camera just a little bit so I can, so I can get to my, 
mold release. We're gonna spray mold release, release first. And we're gonna let that sit for a minute. So literally, I just shake it up. I have my silicone molds and I just spray all of the surfaces. Now we can let that sit. Now, the other thing that I got the other day, yesterday was a good mail call day. I got one of Bob Blanford's chaos blanks. So this blank is going to become a tiny giant Um, it's going to become a tiny giant and that's going to be the 1000 subscriber giveaway pen that I'm going to do on this channel, uh, as soon as I can get it turned and, um, the video put together, Ernie, what's going on? JSG. What's up? Ernie, I'm glad you got your sticker. Uh, that's exciting. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is um not only did i get a chaos blank from bob i also got one of his cut off blank um the the cutoffs so i have a bunch of cutoffs in here that'll make for a lot of really cool stuff um we got a sticker for rjb um so I can't wait to turn these. And Bob sent a, uh, a a little postcard with a message. It says, Robert, thank you for your blank purchase. Congratulations to both of you. He's talking about my wife and I uh, on our future firstborn. Uh, I'm wishing you a happy, healthy baby. Regards, Bob. So you can see that there. Um, so funny story. We actually just got back from the doctor and today we had our 20 week scan. So tomorrow is actually starts uh, week 21 for us. Um, and we just found out today what we're having. So that was super exciting. I don't know if I'm at the liberty of telling you what we're having yet because we've kind of talked about whether we want to um you know what what we want to do with that so i'm i'm gonna hold off just a little bit i'm not going to tell you guys what we're having yet but if you guys hang out long enough i'm sure you guys will figure it out and you got three of his chaos pen blanks this last batch. I love those chaos blanks. I wanted to do a modified slimline, but the one I got, if everything went absolutely perfectly, I could do it. But it's really, really tight. Um, uh, thanks, Ernie. All right, so let's let's go ahead and cast some pen blanks. I'm gonna put on my gloves. And since Angie is here, she asked last week about mixing colors. So I think that's what we're going to do tonight. So what colors do you guys want to see? We'll do, hmm, let's go four colors tonight. Thanks, Jim. We are... We are super excited. Um, come late October, our lives are definitely going to change. All right, so I'm going to put some sweet gum pods in here. Um, I'm just going to make sure that they're, they're free of any debris. Um, I'm not trying to place them specifically. This one has a little... Um, tag on it so I just I ripped that off 
so having sweet gum pods in here and making this a hybrid actually does two things. It makes the blank more interesting, but it also takes up space in the mold. So I don't have to pour 9 million grams. Just putting them in there kind of randomly. This one's got a little bit of a stem on it, so we'll get rid of that. Put that one down in there. There's another stem that I missed. All right. There we go. So four colors. So we need four cups. One, two, three, and four. If we have any extra, we will have uh, we'll have some pen blanks ready to go as an overflow. I'm sure we will have some extra. Um, so I will have. I'll have these overflows in waiting ready to go in case we need them. I'll also have this ring blank. All right, four colors. Um, do I stabilize my pods? I don't, um, but uh, I haven't seen an issue yet with it. Um, I know some people do, some people don't. Uh, I do stabilize all of my burl hybrids. So if it's a wood burl, I stabilize those. I haven't stabilized anything else. So uh, my pine cones, sweet gum pods, um, the walnuts that we cast last week, uh, none of that got stabilized. And just to be safe, I think we're gonna use the big, uh, California Air Tools pressure pot tonight. Just so then that way, when I decide to pour a ton of resin, this is honestly, I think this is going to be my biggest pour ever because I think I'm going to pour um, close to 800 grams. Um, all right, go with baby colors. I like that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use Caster's Choice. So we have, uh, we have a uh, pencil, sky blue, brilliant blue, raspberry pink. There's a, I used to have my mica powders organized there's vibrant pink and just for just for good measure we're gonna go with let me look at yeah paradise blue All right, so I've got five colors here, but I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna mix mix paradise blue and sky blue, and show you what the diff what what the difference is. So here's the difference in color. You can kind of see that there's a you know uh, this paradise blue is a lot darker than this sky blue. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and pour some resin. So we need to go 90 grams of A. I'm gonna back this camera up just a bit. I hate doing that to you guys, but 
that's where we're at. All right, so 90 grams of A. Next week we'll be turning a pencil. It'll be a cigar, a cigar pencil. All right, so let's go 90 grams of A. The shop was pretty cold today. It was about 65 degrees, so this could take a minute. There's 90 there. And again, if you've heard my spiel before, Aluma Light Clear Slow is a one-to-one -one ratio. You have, for every one gram of A you pour, you have to pour one gram of B. So if I pour 90 grams of A, I also need to pour 90 grams of B. And if you're gonna be over on either A or B, you're going to want to be over on the B just a little bit because the B side is the hardener. If you're over on the A side, you run the risk of your resin not setting up. So it doesn't matter whether your resin is in the pressure pot for uh, one hour, four hours, or four days. It's never going to set up. But if you're over on your B side, it'll set up and it might be just a little bit on the uh, harder side or the slightly more brittle, but it'll set up and it'll be perfectly fine to turn. All right. We are at 82, 85, 89, 90. This is also, again, where the uh, where I mentioned the other day or uh, last week that uh, these these pumps come in really handy. They allow me to control the the amount of resin that's being dispensed, and I'm going to have to go. We're getting a little. Uh, light on the A side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour straight from the pour straight from the jug. We've got plenty in here. Eighty five. Eighty-eight, eighty-nine. 89, there's 90. All right. So now we're done with our A side. At this point, I'm gonna introduce some colors. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the sky blue and the paradise blue. So I'm going to put one, two, now there's sky blue. And if I mix this up a little bit, we're going to get a darker blue color like that. Now, if I go ahead and take another popsicle stick uh, I'm going to introduce some paradise blue. Paradise blue is a lighter color. So, you know, just however much. And again, the mixture is whatever you're hoping for. If you want it to be a little darker, then put more of the uh, darker color in. If you want it to be lighter, put more of the lighter color in. But as I mix this, it's going to 
become almost like a two-tone and there it is after we mix in i know that's really hard to differentiate there um but but it, it is different um it can be done and it, it could make some really cool colors so now i'm going to add my other colors so we have brilliant blue one two three and again the mica powder there's no rule uh as to how much you have to put in you know there's nothing that says you put in too much or too little um obviously the more you put in the more solid your blanks are going to be if you pour less mica powder in or you know less pigment whatever you're using um, the less you put in, the more translucent or transparent it will be. Now we have raspberry pink. One, two, three. We'll just get that stirred in a little bit. The powder takes a little bit of time to get stirred in. I mean, we'll stir it in. You know, it'll get stirred in plenty once we add our our B to our res our B to our A side. But um, I just like to get it started. All right, so there's our colors. We'll put those back in the drawer just so we have a little more working room. All of the colors I used tonight were from Caster's Choice. Um, Brian Blum is who I learned to cast from. He's one of the guys that I learned to cast from. Um, and I, you know, I've met him a handful of times. He's a great guy, great to work with. Um, and his line of, of pigments are, you know, I, that's what I use for most of my castings. All right. Now that we have our resin and our cup and our popsicle stick here, we want to make sure that our scale is reading zero again, because again, Alumalite is Alumalite Clear Slow is one to one. So I'm going to pour 90 grams uh, of B into each of these cups. That one was tough. These pumps really want to fight me tonight. It always happens on the live streams though, right? It never happens when you're just working by yourself with no audience. That's all right though. We're in good shape. We've got the resin flowing, so life is good. So other than it being 90 million degrees, what have you guys been up to on this fine Tuesday? I mentioned earlier that we just got back from finding out what we were having, whether it was a boy or a girl. And again, I still haven't told you guys because I mean like that. All right. We're at, we want to make sure we're at zero. And once the B gets mixed into the A, that's kind of when the clock starts to tick. So you really have to start stirring at that point. You have a little more time with the clear slow it's a 12 minute open time. Um, but you still need to make sure that you get everything nice and mixed. 88, 90. There we go. All right. So there's our two blue colors. We're at zero, so we can start pouring B. Five, 
48, 73, we're going to 90, 85, 88, 90. All right. One more. We're at zero. Twenty-four. Oh no. Forty. Fifty. All right, I'm going to take this B off, and we will continue to pour that way. All right. So we're at 55. 50. Going to 90. Again, that's that one-to-one -one ratio. 87, 89, come on, Nine, uh, 90. All right, now we can put away our B side. And now we just need to start stirring. You want to make sure that you stir thoroughly. You want to scrape the cups, the sides of the cups, just to make sure that you get all of the resin mixed in thoroughly. If resin gets stuck on the side of the cup, uh, it might not get mixed in all the way, and it could cause some issues. Um, Also, I use nine ounce cups. I know there are people who use huge buckets because they do huge pours at a time. Um, if you're getting paper, uh, paper cups to stir in, uh, to pour in, the only thing you need to make sure is that you make sure you get the ones that do not have wax in them. Um, you know, again, if you've been here for any length of time, um, if wax, you know, the A and B sides of the resin, they tend to get warm. They heat up because of the exothermic reaction. That's what allows the resin to cure. So as the resin gets hot, when wax gets hot, it goes from the, from more or less a solid state to a liquid state. And if it gets into a liquid state, it can seep into your resin and potentially ruin your, um, your resin pour. Again, the nice thing with clear slow is that you have a little bit of time. You still need to work fast, but you do have a little more time. I found that when, uh, when I was using just Alumalite Clear, it had a seven minute working time, which is what is advertised. But when it gets to that 95 to 100 degree range where you start to pour, um, it really kicks fast. So I was running out of time and there were some pours that I didn't get in the pot in time because it, it, it reacted and set up so fast. Um, but I found that with using a Luma Light Clear Slow, um, even once it gets to that 95 to 100 degree range, I still have a little bit of time to, um, to get the resin poured. I still need to move at that point, but I have a little more time that, that it affords me. So that's why I like to use Alumalite Clear Slow. Do, 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 do. 
Okay. Uh, must be 100 here in Texas. 65 in Washington State. Sorry, guys, I'm checking out the chat real quick. I know I should be stirring, and I will be. Uh, four degrees at the moment here in South Wales, Australia. I'm assuming that is Celsius. Oh, that's right. It is winter over there. Um, just think of all the help you will get from the little one in the future. Yeah. Um, if you guys, I act, we actually made the announcement, um, uh, you know, I, I, probably a month and a half or so ago. Um, if, if you go on my channel, if you're on my channel now, um, I have a video called the 2020 quarantine challenge or something like that. Uh, it's called 2020 quarantine challenge, a V carved sign. Um, I'm a little biased, but that's probably one of my favorite projects that I've worked on. So if you haven't seen that, you should go check it out. Um, but don't check it out now because you're hanging out with me on the live stream. Alumalite clear slow and Alumalite clear, both of them. Um, I like to pour my resin between 95 and 100 degrees. Again, this is not new information. Um, 95 to 100 degrees. 95 is where you get that good color separation. Um, so in this case tonight, uh, that the blues and the pinks, uh, if I pour in that 95 to 100 degree range, which is what my plan is, um, I should get pretty good color separation. Now, if I poured before 95, I do run the risk of getting color blending. Um, which is which is fine if that's what you're going for, um, but if you're if you don't want color blending, hold off till at least 95 to 100 degrees. Color blending with the blue and the pink, you know, if you if you think back to when you, uh, if you think back to your your colors, you know, if you if you mix blue and pink, it'll you'll get purple. There's nothing wrong with purple. I love purple. Midnight Purple is one of the caster's choice colors, and it is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, I love using Midnight Purple. I don't use it nearly enough. And once again, I use a Harbor Freight uh, temperature gun um, to check my temperature. I know I'm getting close and I start using it once I start to feel the uh, sides of the cup heat up a little bit or if the resin starts to thicken up. Those are two indicators that uh, tell me that I'm getting close to that 95 degree mark. Continue stirring here. We've got a little ways to go. Uh, today, right now, the shop is 66 degrees, and we're looking at about 56% humidity. Um, that humidity level is a little higher than I'd like, but it shouldn't be an issue with color casts. I would be extremely concerned if I was going to do a clear cast and my humidity was 56%, but because we're doing color casting, um, I'm not, not worried about it. We're not, not nearly as worried about it. So 
So my wife and I have been getting these popsicles from the store and they have jokes on them. So I kid you not two in a row, I got the same exact joke. So it was semi funny the first time I told the joke, but then the second time I told the joke, my wife knew the answer because I had already told the joke. But the joke is, why didn't the skeleton go to the dance? And the answer is because he had no body to go with. See, I'm working on my dad jokes. I know, that one was bad. But, got to start somewhere, right? All right, we're going to check here. We're at 88 degrees, 89 degrees. So, we're, we're almost there. You always want to check your temperatures after you stir um, to get a more accurate uh, reading. I've, I've learned that the, the most accurate readings that I get are after I stir and when I pull the popsicle stick out and I point the thermometer at the popsicle stick. Uh, that one says 86. Okay, now if I were to just take a temperature on either of these pinks because I haven't stirred them in a little bit, I might or might not get uh, an accurate reading. So we're just gonna stir these. And you don't have to stir them for long, you just have to you just have to get it mixed up. These ones, because they were poured last, are probably going to be a little on the cooler side. Yeah, 80, 86. So we're getting there. And we have four colors tonight, so as long as three of them get up to 95, uh, I'll be ready to pour. So whatever that fourth color is, uh, whatever temperature that fourth color is, it's not going to matter as long as the other three are at 95 or uh, in that 95 to 100 range. And I think we'll do another dirty pour tonight, meaning I'll take the resin once it gets up to temperature, I'll put it in this. Um, in this cup here, and then we'll pour uh, pour from there. Uh, these were knife scales and pen blanks from some some uh, from a cast I did earlier this week. Did some knife scales. I did some pen blanks. I did some ring blanks. So uh, I did a little bit of everything. And I try to stagger my cups just so I don't knock one over. Because if you knock one of these over, one, you've lost that resin and wasted that resin, and that's an expensive mistake. But then you also have a huge mess on your hands. So I try to give myself a little bit of space. We're getting close. Scraping the sides. This, this blue that we mixed here, it's got to be pretty close because it's getting pretty thick. 98, yep, that was ready. We're going to be getting ready to pour real soon. Ninety five. This is the part where it goes from you're comfortably stirring to you go into crisis mode real fast. But you got to stay calm because if you go into crisis mode and you don't, uh, you don't stay cool that's when you're really gonna 
make a mistake or you're more prone to make a mistake and that's that's no fun all right so our three of these are just about up to temperature so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cup here i'm going to pour these two in first and there's no right or wrong way to pour whatever you whatever you want to do go for it that's how some of these that's how some of these casters have found their signature styles they have a certain way of pouring uh their their blanks um and they just they, they go for it that way scrape off any any extra resin that we can get out of the cup we'll do that with this one as well Now we'll do the other two. I might run out of, this is gonna be close. I am like at the top of this Powerade container. It's a good thing I got a new one because the layers of resin that hardened in the previous cups would have made this one overflow. We are like right at the top there. All right. So now we'll call that, we'll call that good. Now I'm just going to take my popsicle stick and just give a little bit of a swirl. Now we're definitely getting some color blending here because I decided to stir this just a touch but i don't want to stir it too much so now at this point i'm going to pour these blanks and i like to pour on the sweet gum pods because then that way the resin gets into uh, the crevices and the cracks. Um, here's the second one. When you cast with sweet gum pods, they're going to have some voids. It's just part of the game but you do your best to fill them. Um, now I'm gonna pour a layer here, a layer here, and my resin is starting to get real thick, so I'm going to get these in the pot as quick as I can, because we are running out of time. So when I get these in the pot, my air compressor is going to go off. I will wait for that to, it, it, because it's a smaller compressor, I'm going to go ahead and wait for that to um, finish refilling. And then I will check out the chat. So now we have these three that need to go in. When you are tightening the lid on your pressure pot, you always want to go opposites. Um, that way you have even pressure being tightened on the seal. If you 
tighten two that are right next to each other that could alter the seal and become an issue man this pour has given me the run for a run for my money we went from zero to 60 real quick and i knew that could happen just want to make sure this lid is nice and tight we're going to get some air on here it's going to get loud for a minute All right, I'm gonna switch the camera one more time now that we are, now that we are done with the casting portion. So, so that's that, yeah. And um, if I check the chat, um, um, Todd, I like how it's all calm and then it gets crazy for one minute. It really does. It goes from zero to 60 in no time at all. And even if you know it's coming, um, it can still be, it can still be, be crazy. Um, so, you know, as long as you know that it's a thing, um, it, it's not an issue. But if you don't know that it's, if you don't know it's coming and you're not ready for it, uh, it, it could be, you could end up wasting a resin pour. So those are the handle blanks. We'll get a, we'll get two handles or call blanks, uh, as a lot of turners like to turn calls. Um, I think duck calls and things like that. Um, we filled the pressure pot to 50 PSI. Um, uh, what tree are the sweet gum pods of? Uh, we have gums in Australia, but I'm not aware of gums with pods. I, you know, I'll be honest. I don't really know, Ernie. Um, if I grab, I actually just got, here are the sweet gum pods that I have that are ready to go and dry. Um, but I also have a bunch more that I got in a swap right here. And then just on the other side of my casting station way over there. Um, I actually got another bag as well. So I'm not entirely sure what tree they're from, um, but they're around here. Uh, if somebody knows in the, in the chat and wants to put it in the comments, that would be great. Um, so, so yeah, we're going to get two, Two handle or call blanks. We'll probably get one full pen blank, and then I'm working on. Uh, there are two more in there that have uh, partial pores that'll uh, be layered, which which end up being really cool. Uh, let me see if I can go grab a couple of those real quick. Um, I've kind of started to call them my over my over pour blanks, um, but with these. Like this one, you can kind of see there was, there's a couple different layers in there. Um, this one, you can see that there's three distinct layers. 
and these are all just straight Aluma Light Clear Slow. Um, so that that was an overpour blank, um, and then this one as well. You can see there's actually four layers in this one. Now, depending on how it gets turned, you know, some most I'm guessing the outer two layers will get turned off. But um, but yeah, these are uh, some overpour blanks that I've been uh, kind of working on. Um, and while we're at it, this might be a good time to show some of the, uh, some better images of last week's cast. So this is what one of the bottle stoppers looks like. Uh, these bottle stoppers, if I remember correctly, I believe they're one and a half inches in diameter and uh, maybe closer to one and three eighths in diameter. And they're about two and three eighths long. Um, so, so here are the, I know we're kind of backtracking with last week's projects, but here's some bottle stoppers. There's one of them. There's two of them or the second one. Good grief. I can't even talk. Um, and these do have the walnut shells in them. They'll show up when they turn. You can kind of see one there that'll, that'll show up real nice. And you can see, uh, another one right there. So right there, right there, uh, over here up top. So this one will be a good one. And then you can see this one up here and then there's more on the inside here. So those will all be bottle stoppers. And then here's one of the pen blanks uh, that we got. Turn it this way. And then here's another one. And then this one, this last one's my personal favorite. This, this pattern in here, if nobody claimed this one, I wouldn't be heartbroken if I had to turn it. I'm just going to be honest. So, so that was last week's projects. Um, as we wrap up before, before we sign off, I do want to uh, thank my top tier patrons. Mark and Angie, um, they really stepped up. They, you know, they're awesome. And I am really grateful for their support. Um, you know, going forward, there are some Patreon benefits, um, either through YouTube, um, you know, there, there are different tiers. So if that's something that's, that, that interests you, if you like what I'm doing, um, you know, there, there are, there are the different tiers, like I said. So, um, if you want to do that, that's fine. If not, no pressure. Um, another great way I do have Amazon affiliate links in the description of this video. So, uh, if you use one of those links to buy anything, uh, I get a small percentage of that. Um, my website, uh, cross dash cut dash creations, uh, that has some merchandise on it as well, uh, logo merchandise, as well as um, some other hand-turned stuff that I have. Um, and then so social media is also um, in the description of this video. So there are multiple ways to support me uh, if you do feel that uh, that is something you want to do. Um, you know, the Amazon affiliate links are the easiest way to not spend any extra money. Um, and that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so if there are anything else, uh, if there's anything else in the chat, we can have a conversation. Um, they, they, so the American sweet gum trees, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, in the Southeast US, uh, that's where they predominantly are. That makes, okay. Um, okay, so, um, there's a Latin name for 
sweet gum trees that I uh, liquid liquidum bar something who's a what's it um, I don't I, I've never taken Latin a day in my life but that's good to know that's good information so um, so so there you have it Ernie um, that's where the sweet gum comes from anything else so if you guys have any questions or any comments go ahead and put them in the chat i'll stay on here as long as you guys want to uh have a conversation if there's anything i haven't uh if you guys still have questions or you know want to don't want to put them in the in the uh, comments um in the chat uh, publicly, you can always send me a message on Instagram. That's probably the easiest way. Um, or my email, my email, there's a website submission form uh, on my website as well. Those are probably two of the easiest ways to get a hold of me. Um, can you show how to turn a ring? So, Angie, I that is in the plans. I have turned one ring so far. Um, so when I get a couple more under my belt, um, that is on the list. Next week, I will be, um, I will be turning a uh, cigar mechanical pencil. It will be, um, it, it'll be one of uh, Braxton Frankenberry's uh, Buckeye Nation mixes, and uh, that'll be. That'll be a party. So next week we will turn, uh, we'll turn a pencil, a cigar style. So uh, that'll be my first cigar pencil. I've turned cigar pens before and I've assembled those, but never a pencil. They're usually pretty similar, but uh, I'll have to do some, some research just to make sure that I'm, uh, I, that I get it right. Um, but rings are on the list. Uh, so we'll do a ring one week. We'll do the cigar pencil. Next week, I do have uh, I do have a pen in the shop now that is completely finished, but it needs to be it needs to be fixed. Uh, the CA finish wasn't quite up to uh, wasn't quite up to the standard that I would have liked. So one of these weeks, I think what we'll do is we will disassemble the pen, we'll put it back on the lathe, and we'll go through the finishing process. And I'll show you guys how I do that. So that'll be coming up. Thanks, Jim. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, so again, thanks for a great show. Um, I know we got kind of crazy there at the end with the, uh, with the resin getting up to temperature real quick. And I, uh, I wasn't quite as smooth as I would, hoped, would have hoped. But uh, Alumalite Clear Slow, it does go in the pressure pot for four hours, so I'll probably either pull these out of the, uh, out of the pot right before I go to bed um, tonight. Uh, it's about 6 o'clock now, so you know we put those in the pot a little while ago, so I don't know, 9.45, 10 o'clock, give or take, I can take those out of the pot. Alumalite Clear Slow, you do have to let it sit for at least four hours in the pot uh, to cure if you're just using Alumalite clear the seven minute working time uh that's a two hour uh demold or uh, that's a two hour pressure time um but i also like i you know that's an, it, that is the one downside to alumalite clear slow is it's the you have the longer uh pressure pot time but because i got that second pressure pot um it does help a ton and honestly Putting, putting the Alumalite clear slow in the pressure pot for those extra two hours for me to have the extra time is, is worth it. Uh, JSG woodworking. You're welcome. Um, yeah. It, it, and that's the thing uh, casting and working on getting better at it myself. Um, yeah, that's the thing. You know, I've been casting for, I think two years at this point which really isn't that long and I'm still learning things. That's why I go to these pen turning shows, um, you know, and you know, I, I listen to the demos because even though I've done most of the things that they're demoing, the, um, 
you know, the fact that I can't learn anything from these guys is ridiculous. You know, I, I can always pick up on, on, you know, even if it's something small, I can still pick up on something new. Um, so that's why, and it's good to just hang out with, with the pen turning community. There are, there are a lot of really, really great people in the pen turning community. And I, I couldn't ask for better friends. Uh, can you cast many pine cones in clear colors? Um, clear colors. You can cast them in clear where you just don't add any pigment. Uh, that would be one where I would make sure that my, the humidity in my shop is a lot lower than it is, but I, I you, it could be done. Um, if you wanted clear colors in the sense of it being translucent, meaning there's some color, but you can still kind of see through it. You, that's absolutely a possibility. Um, I would probably use something like a Lumalite dyes or some sort of uh, a, a lesser amount of pigment to get a translucent look. But yeah, you could definitely do either a translucent or a clear look um, with pine cones. You could actually do that um, with, you know, any of these, you know, sweet gum pods, uh, burls, um, the, um, the walnut shells that we just cast last week. Uh, so those are, th those are all definitely possibilities. Cool. Well, this one was a fun one. It did run a little bit. Uh, it did run a little bit long, but that's okay. Uh, uh, alcohol dyes would work. Yeah. So as long as you have anything that's alcohol based, um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely, um, it's absolutely a possibility. It's absolutely an option. So, um, so yeah, good, uh, that was a really good conversation. I, I really appreciate uh, you guys that, um, that that really chime in on the chat and um, yeah, that that chime in on the chat and and just make it a lot of fun. Um, so again, next week we'll be turning the uh we'll be turning the cigar pencil the week after that we'll either be doing a ca finishing demo with a um repl uh basically a fix of a pen and then uh we'll go from there we'll put ring turning on the list and uh we'll, we'll get it done if you guys if, if there are any times that are that work better for you guys let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will just plan on doing Tuesdays at five because that seems to work fairly well for most people. So, um, so yeah, uh, thanks for stopping in, Ernie uh, and everybody else. I really appreciate you guys being here. So this time for real, I will see you guys next week and we'll turn the pen. Have a good evening. Have a good week. Send me any messages if you are uh, if you have any questions or comments, see you next Tuesday.